I'm gonna start this off with saying, don't confuse this with the how-to video. I'm just gonna show you how I reinforced and extended my arms. This is definitely not the way everybody does it. This is probably not a way a lot of people do it um, because I cut that sucker right in half and welded in a piece of tubing. The plating, I just turned paper and metal, basically. Made a little shape, um, traced it, put it on some metal plasma, cut it out. Did a ball joint plate down here, because I'm, and I also welded up the factory holes, because I'm going to re-drill this for a GM, the newer GM style ball joint for like off of a, uh, the G-bodies and unbreakable ball joints. So, this is my next victim of hackery. God, that's a lot lighter. <laughs> that is crazy. So, make a straight line. It's basically hack that sucker right in half. That's step one. Well, step one is to get it off the car, get your bushings out. These come out really easily um, with a chisel and a BFH. Big frickin' hammer. It's actually not that big, but this did the job. Um, you just gotta tap it around the edge and start working it out and the bushings come out. Um, once you get one bushing out, your bar will come out. Take the other side out, take the ball joint off, and I just wire wheeled it as best I could get in um, to try to take some of the dirt and grime off. I mean, you can still see somewhere I couldn't get it. it. It was pretty nasty, so. Let's hack this sucker in half, okay? Why didn't I extend it at the ears? Which is where most people do this. I did not feel comfortable with that because I extended it an inch and a half. So I didn't feel comfortable cutting it off here even though a lot of people do. I didn't feel comfortable cutting it off here and extending it out. Um, an inch and a half, I mean, that's, that's a lot. That's an inch and a half. That tube is an inch and a half. So it's just, it seemed like a huge distance for me to try to make up in there. Um, so that's why I didn't do it like that. One thing I'm going to do before I cut this in half is I'm going to cut off these lips. Because on this one, I ended up grinding them off, which made a lot more work so I'm gonna go ahead and cut those off before I cut this thing in half. Done deal. Let's start hacking. Got two pieces of your 64 Impala control arm. You're only halfway there. Well, not even halfway. I mean, you just, you just basically messed up at that point. You put your uh, your tubing on there. Make sure to to clean your areas where you're going to be welding as good as you can. Uh, set your tubing up there. Get it to sit straight, and then uh, give it a couple tack welds to hold it in place. So this is the problem that I ran into the first time that I was not prepared for. When you cut something that's this shape, cut it in half and then stretch it out, your angles are completely off. So you have to, uh, to be kind of prepared for that. So when I wrapped the other one, when I did the sides, that plate that I made fills in that difference, so you, you can't really tell. But if you look inside of here, it's it's the same deal. So you just gotta try to line it up, as good as you can line it up, and then weld it up. Spend some time here, making sure everything looks right, everything is setting the way you want it to sit. You can change it now. You can't change it when it's all wrapped. Perfect. And then when you get it real close to how you want it to set, drop it. And do it all over again. Let's 
It's all fun and games until it's welded on. All right, now I'm gonna take a uh, cutoff wheel again, which I absolutely hate. I'm gonna hack those off, get them a little more flush inside of there. Now that I got my tube cut out, I'm just gonna throw a couple tack welds down here. After I turn on my welder. The struggle is real, only having one 220 outlet here. Now I'm gonna start with this, the top plate. Um, quick tip. You want, you wanna put a little bit of a curve on it before you start putting it on there. I mean, you can, you can press it down on top of your A-arm um, to get it to, to shape all the way, but this helps out a lot, putting a little curve in there. Um, all you need to do is open up a vise a little bit and just put the lip of it in there and bend it down, walk it around. Just going through and clamping it as I go tack welding. All right. I think I am getting to the point where I am too tired to safely weld. Never too tired to safely swing a hammer. I'm gonna call it a night. Be back tomorrow. We'll finish this up. New day here in Des Moines, Iowa. It's even one of those nice days. T-shirt weather. Yeah. Haven't had the garage open in a while. It's quite the view. I'm sure people driving by are like, what is going on there? Garage still works. Shoot, that thing can hang up there all summer. Plenty of room. I'm going to do a little garage cleaning before I get back to this A-arm. Get some of this dust out of here. Still a mess. A little less dusty, though. All right, let's get back to it. Now I can go ahead and start on the sides. Two pieces here. <coughs> Two pieces, so you can figure out which piece goes where. Once you figure out what side goes where, it's a lot of high tech beating and clamping and tack welding and more beating, more tack welding. Yep. Beat, clamp, tack, repeat. There it is, all tacked up. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this from the back side, bring it in closer to the edge, weld up all my edges, all my seams, and then uh, I'll turn the camera back on once I get that all welded up. It's not terribly fun to watch, it's just a lot of clamping and welding, and clamping and welding. It's pretty much what this whole process is, but I'm gonna get to it. spend more time getting all of this stuff perfect and I still might a little bit more but I'm not going to be chroming these so I'm not going to go ahead and get it perfectly metal finished but that's what you need to do if you wanted to chrome plate these is you need to make sure um, you got any little voids like that one there 
any little imperfections filled in and smoothed out and then um, you should metal polish these things sand them smooth uh, almost get like a shine to the metal before you send them out to the chroma ran a little bead of weld on those two seams and ground that smooth I really don't know if the weld is necessary right there but it, it looks a lot nicer I'm calling it calling it done yeah, once I get the actual ball joints that I'm going to use, um, these ones that I have are just a cheaper version of the Unbreakables. They still have the same bolt pattern, so I could I could line it up, but I, I might just wait until I get the actual ball joints that I'm going to use for this. Yeah, they'll sit in there like that, so we should have plenty of room to make that work. But yeah, I'm going to call that. Now, on to the lowers. I think I'm going to start with the passenger side again, like I did on the front, the upper control arms, because that way if I screw up real bad, I know how to make the driver's side nice, and the driver's side is the side that I'm always going to be on, you know what I'm saying? So I'm really never going to see the passenger side stuff, so that way if I make a mistake, it's over there. And by the second one, I should be a professional by the driver's side. Low riding. It's hard to keep a camera in this environment working. I exploded one GoPro. This is my second GoPro. And it's got a bunch of weld all over it. So if anybody's got any GoPros out there, I could use them.